Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's been a month, but we're still here. I'm GM McCall, and welcome back to Star Trek Adventures Nighthawk, where we start our second season. It's been about three months since we ended season one with a bit of a bang, and the players are all interested in seeing what happens this uh, this season. And I believe that the commander, Bashir, is going to take the commander's log today. Stardate, 82948.3. First officer's log. It's been three months since the attack on the Tholians. Luckily, we've seen no more activity here in the Lasai Expanse from the Typhon Pact. The captain has been off organizing the support ships of the new fleet. I have been supervising the repairs and the refit of the Nighthawk, and we are finally ready to continue our real mission. It has seemed that Toggy has chosen a growth spurt. He has chosen a form of a humanoid adolescent. While still showing limited vocabulary, he has been, well, difficult to the point of disobeying myself and Lashran and <clears throat> hanging out with Lieutenant Erkin and constantly tormenting with what would one call practical jokes on our chief of security, Lieutenant Commander Helsing. I am disappointed, but still intrigued with this experiment. After spending some downtime researching the information obtained from the spear, we are heading out to what is called the Scorpi space to investigate some rumors of an ancient technology. We have to pass through a multi-light year spanning nebula that is emitting a mix of gamma and theta radiation. What could possibly go wrong? End log. Yes. As said, you guys are going to be on the bridge. And it would help if we were actually there. <clears throat> yeah. Commander Helsing, you uh, wander onto the bridge at the start of your shift. Just slightly after the rest of the uh, senior staff. And lo and behold, between the time of your gamma shift partner leaving and you arriving, someone may have... Um, turned your security console into a potted flower garden. Togi is sitting at a console trying to look busy while not, well, while imitating the act of snickering. <sighs> Never should have played the trick on him and that first, on our first thing, those rotating force shields. Never should have done it. Engineer taught him this stuff. <laughs> okay, I gotta see if I can find a hologram with termites. Yeah, that'll be the next thing. Um, Togi! Swivels in his chair. Yes, Lieutenant Commander. Can you please clear off? Is it okay if I clear this off myself, or is this attached in some way to you he wander he uh steps up takes a couple steps over to the terminal lowers his hand into the mulch and reabsorbs all the flowers there's a little bit of dirt and crud left over but that's brushed aside really quickly and oh. upon detecting the detritus on the floor little automated drones sweep out underfoot and clear it away thank you very much it was Humorous at first. Toki nods and then sort of looks over to Commander Bashir, seeing, trying to seek approval. I just shake my head. <laughs> <laughs> Without mentioning anything further, he'll just go back to a auxiliary science console and begin poking away at the limited access that the captain has given him. Uh, you've been through this nebula now for two days, traveling at low warp speed. Anything higher than warp four will cause destabilizations in the nebula, which could potentially lead to small explosions. That's not a good thing. Uh, by stellar cartography's estimation, there would be at least another three or four days of travel before you reach the other side. It's a pretty thick soup out there. 
uh, as you begin to settle into the routine of what is most likely going to be another day of catching up on old work, poking away at reports, and dutifully no ignoring um, uh, any hails from the outside world, uh, Ensign Rani um, uh, speak. Look, ra ah, Ensign Rani raises her head and looks to the captain. Captain Singral, I'm unsure. I'm unsure if this is what I think it is, but this looks like a repeating signal of some sort. Probably a hailing frequency, maybe. It's hard to pick out in the noise. Can you determine its point of origin? I'm attempting to do so, sir. I've narrowed it down to about 500 uh, a square uh, a square area of roughly 500 to 700 kilometers. Is this a signal that we recognize that's on record? Doesn't it's hard to say hard to say, sir. Only reason I believe it's a signal is I'm seeing several repeating uh, patterns that Distinct, that are distinct from the random radiation generated by the nebula. All right. Well, let's uh, let's pop this over on the view screen and see if we could uh, figure this out. Yes, sir. So we're going to cut to the nebula. <clears throat> so this is the nebula that you guys are in. And after, so you are on the extreme range, and the, each gap is several hundred kilometers away. There's several hulks floating around, and you've, this isn't the first few you've ran into. This nebula seems to eat away at any carcasses uh, fairly quickly, and if it wasn't for your strong shields, the Nighthawk itself may have run aground on several of the small asteroids or planetoids that have been flying around this unkempt maelstrom of a stellar nursery. Uh, as you near it, um, Vault or Ensign Ranis believes that it's coming from... Yes, sir. I'm getting closer, sir. Yep. It is definitely a signal of some sort. I'm putting it, uh, putting what I can through the universal translator and putting it through the system. And a heavily distorted, partially um, digitally reconstructed voice comes through the uh, speaker. This is the merchant trader Longclaw asking for any assistance crashed into sail torn please guild help again this is the merchant trader long claw sail torn and it repeats ad nauseum for as long as you choose to listen to it oh fantastic well, I'm sure glad I found this repeating signal in a nebula of ghost ships. But I suppose it definitely is worth investigating. But let's not be too uh, cautious. Uh, let's uh, see if we have Let's any... not be too cautious. I'm sorry. <laughs> let's not be too cautious. Let's not be too cautious. Be incredibly cautious, <laughs> rather. Thank you. Glad I have my first officer to, uh, you know, that's why, that's why you're here. <laughs> Earning your pay. In any case, let's see if we have any... Uh, records to a ship uh, by the name of Longclaw. Uh, search both Federation and potentially cultural databases. It may be regional. Um, okay. In any case, uh, I suppose we are the only people here that have the ability to render assistance, so we should investigate. Mm -hmm. But we don't know how long this ship has been out here in the nebula, and it could be possibly derelict. So, proceed with caution. Okay. So is there any way to for signal degradation to see how long it's been on the loop? Uh, Excellent question. That would be a good, um, probably insight, I'd say insight con for this, possibly insight engineering, and the ship can assist with, uh, let's say, computers plus engineering. 
and this is going to be a difficulty three test. I'll go ahead and roll for this chef. Okay. Anybody have better insight? All right, I'll give her a shot. If you have anything like signal and like communications or signal analysis or pattern analyzing analysis, something like that. Cryptography? Not in this case, I'm afraid. Okay, nothing from the ship. And I won't get it. Especially with no focus. Okay. It's too difficult to tell the uh, alien nature of the signal. Um, there's just no information about the Scorpi uh, communication systems in your the Nighthawk database. So it's just too difficult, or you're just not able to draw any conclusions. Well, Commander Shmashir, prepping away team. I'm still going to be supervising this mission from the bridge. Hi, Captain. Um, I should mention that um, the transporters will be very difficult to function in this nebula. Uh, That's what I was wondering. Basically, a difficulty four test from a transporter pad. Oof. Um, so, you know, you can do I it. I think we'll take a shuttle. Uh, <laughs> okay. It'll be a little easier. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you are able to determine that it is coming from the sail vessel, and that is on the far right of the screen. Um, uh, feel free to move the Nighthawk as you wish, otherwise I'm just going to assume that you're staying way out there, several hundred kilometers away, and just launching the shuttle into the graveyard. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and we will take... Lieutenant Commander Helsing. I will take our engineer and our doctor and a couple security. Do we have a decent pilot? Jefferson raises his hand. Jefferson D. Uh, now, he has put a lot of training in we'll recently. The ship. <laughs> there has been a few support characters that have been made that may have a helm operation. Let's have a look. Nope. Uh, Shross Shevhin Os, the Andorian in medical, has. He can fly. <laughs> okay. Although, really, Jefferson is the uh, uh, small crafts expert amongst them. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought he was, so. He is. Let's, let's, let's take Jefferson. Okay, we'll just NPC Urkin at hell. Urkin. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let me just make sure that I have all the tokens in place. We're going to have. Uh, so it was Commander is flying, or Commander Bashir, uh, Jefferson, uh, Mr. Helsing, and who else would like to go? I said Shras and the Doctor. Okay. So... Yeah, Kowalks would definitely like to go himself. He's bored. Okay. <laughs> so uh, will the Captain be taking control of Jefferson for this? Certainly. Cool. Ha! <laughs> What could possibly go wrong? Could go wrong. <laughs> yeah. okay. Don't worry, two times the charm. <laughs> okay, so we are going. Do we to... still want to have other? I think we should. Yeah, I would like at least do more cigar, uh, just red shirts. Okay. And probably um, Hanara and uh, Lisa Knoll. Okay, so we have <coughs> two more security officers. Okay, I believe that's everyone. For some reason, Jefferson isn't showing up right. We'll fix that right now. Cool. Okay. Uh, the shuttle just is the shuttle leaves the Nighthawk with minimal hassle. Um, if I could have Jefferson, please roll me a daring plus um, con. Check, check, please. Ship can assist with engines plus con. 
And this will just be a difficulty one task, just to make sure that you get to the ship. And hello, Momentum. Uh, do you want me to write, roll for the Shadowcraft? Sure. So and that is... Come, right? Yep. So far that is three Momentum. And I know that's typically Urkin's job, but he's not here, so someone please keep control, keep track of Momentum. I order Coax. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> what, what are we up to right now? We're up to... Three. Three. Yep. Okay. Draw three. Okay, got it. <laughs> cool. So whatever training um, Lieutenant Erkin has put Jefferson Davis through these last three months have been paying off in spades. Uh, this is, you would not know that there was a dangerous soup of heavy radiation outside the ne outside the uh, barely a half or a three inch thick uh, duranium hull plating. Jefferson seems a bit smug. Um, I would like to do a scan um, and see if this sh like sail ship that we're heading towards mm -hmm. um, has life support or any you know right. any functioning functionality I guess okay uh, so this will be um, insight science ship can or shuttle can assist with uh... Uh, sensor science a difficulty is going to be a two just because the nebula is so bloody thick. Okay. Okay, I'll do the ship. Since uh... I am going to go ahead and use one of those momentum we just got. Okay, so two momentum. Okay, shuttlecraft yeah. could succeed. Yep, shuttlecraft got one. Nice. Oh. Okay. So that is one momentum and one complication. Uh, so the. Uh, yeah. So there is a life. So there is a minimal amount of life support on board. Barely a trace o trace oxygen. Um, on board, and there is one life sign. Um, it does appear to be very similar to that of the Scorpy corpses that were discovered by the uh, Deep Space 15 station roughly four or five months ago. You've never actually uh, seen a live one yet, but could be. There, there was the reports of the corpses. I remember that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um... And for the complication, I'm just going to bank the threat, because I think I have ideas for it. Oh, goody. Indeed. Good thing uh, we left Togi on the ship. Yeah, no kidding. I thought about that. <laughs> that was that crossed my mind, but... All right. Um, I am going to try to hail them. Uh, basically, just say, hi, we're here. <laughs> okay. The... There is no response to your hail, just the repeating message over and over again. Uh, the, the solar sail itself is a largish scale 2 vessel. Uh, however, the sails itself are at least five times its size. And as you get closer, you can definitely see that the have been tattered and torn and dissected. Uh, the, the ship's hull shows several signs of um, penetration that have been patched and a lot of scoring from just exposure to the environment. Not quite to scale, but you get the point. Is this somewhat similar to like one of the uh, like ancient Bajoran ships? Very similar, uh, yes. Okay. Um, if um, the engineer or someone wishes to roll a either a reason engineering, actually a reason engineering would work best, uh, with a difficulty of one, 
Yeah, you might be able to figure out why how it is a sail. Or how, how it functions as a sailor. Oh, you're muted, uh, Thrushrad. Sorry, I said to fix some background noise. Oh, that's all right. So what was that again? Um, if you're interested in learning about the ship from sensor readings, you can roll uh, Reason Engineering with difficulty okay. one. Right. And if you have like engines or propulsion or structural design, anything like that would work. Uh... I guess the closest I have is power systems. Uh, not in this case, I'm afraid. Okay, so reason plus engineer? Yeah. Well, that's the one success you need. So you've, you've heard of this in theory, but you've never actually seen it in practice. Uh, so it is a sailing vessel, but instead of you know catching solar rays and flying that way, they have po somehow created and pointed a tachyon particle generator right at the sails. Uh, tachyons are particles that travel faster than the speed of light, and enough of them is enough to catch a sail and fling it. Not the most uh, controllable technology, but it appeals to you in your dashing nature. I'll keep that in mind for next time whenever we possibly might need this in the future. Right, we might want to pick up some blueprints while we're here. <laughs> um, so, a uh, quick question for the captain on the Nighthawk. Uh, whereabouts is the Nighthawk going to be in relation to all this? Um, current position, we'll... or...? Yeah, we'll keep our distance. Okay. Um not we'll, we'll we'll follow we'll trail them closely behind uh well when i say close i mean i'll just move the ship and i'll show you yeah, <laughs> i could totally do that yes you can. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't been on break or anything no, it's, it's been it's, no. it's been some time i've been stuck at a bunch of meetings you know single is uh, busy thinking about action you know yeah. it is what it is totally cool Okay, so you are down there, and the shuttle is over here. Uh, so they are not responding to your hails. Uh, there is a docking port that does not appear to be actively functioning at the moment. Or... Okay. I'll have uh, Davis uh, dock on the docking port. All right. Can we check what the uh, environment on the inside is? Do we need Enviro suits or anything like that? I just did. Uh, it was... Uh, cool. Yeah, we're we're okay, but it, it's functioning life support with minimal okay. oxygen, so okay. we might need some breath mass, if anything, if we got them on the shuttle. Okay. Small oxygen thing would probably be of some assistance, so let me... That's the wrong place. Will that cost us uh, momentum to uh No, because it's have. Okay. required for the scene, you guys can have it. Okay. Yep. So Coax will probably uh, go and dispense some breathing apparatuses for everybody then, if that's what's needed for the environment. Okay. I want to have those the animated series uh, belts that just put the big yellow glow around you, and you can <laughs> go and walk in space. The electro condom. <laughs> uh, do you really think Fresh we have out. that special effects budget? <laughs> uh, okay, so who's going in first? Uh, recommend security go in. I'll take point with the um, other two following me. Very well. It has occurred to me that I don't actually have a theater of the mind set piece for this. So we're just going to go to the start page and everyone's going to have to think extra hard. Oh no, we just got off break. No thinking. Sorry. Be before we got on, I, d I don't think I heard. Um, did we do a scan of the environment for um, the radiation from the environment coming bleeding in, or did we just check if there was breathable atmosphere? Uh, your scan support. Your scan said that. Um, but if you'd like, because you're science officer, I could answer that question. 
because you get a free one. Please answer that question. <laughs> uh, there is a minimal amount of radiation that's leaked through, but not enough to cause immediate harm to individuals. So we won't be growing new antenna. You wish. I have something for that. <laughs> I could I could do the third one. Step into my office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll see you later. Okay, so security <laughs> folks were going in first. Okay. And then the rest of you behind. Neat. And then once we'll... we're in um, Nasha Noel will Lisa Noel will take up the rear right. and uh, Hanara will take take the lead in Okay, uh, the inside of the ship is beat to hell um, there is an individual there it looks like there has been well it, it has been lived in very heavily uh, traveled in um, everything is built for creatures that are far larger than you um, there's small um, elevated platforms instead of chairs. Um, there is... The computers are slightly higher than what is comfortable for the average uh, humanoid to stand in. And there is a f large cargo area in the back. Um, if you can think um, sort of steampunk submarine style of the old whole aesthetic, that's sort of what I'm trying to go at. There okay. is... One, be, uh, one being which could be classified as a, well, okay, it's not humanoid at all. Uh, it's a spacesuit. Uh, it looks like it is designed for a half scorpion creature, half humanoid. There is several small tendrils uh, for feet, large um, sort of accordion-like uh, appendages that would end in uh, claws. Um, and that's only the lower half. The upper half is more more like it would encompass a humanoid. So standard NASA-style, very bulky suit. Uh, it is uh, currently at the helm position. It makes no motion to... It, or it makes no mo moves to acknowledge your presence. So it's occupied? It's currently upright, and there does appear to... It does appear rigid at the moment. Uh quick medical scan is it a life form is it showing that, that would, there's somebody occupying sure um, that would be a insight plus medicine test this will be a difficulty of one okay insight medicine uh, xenobiology xenobiology would work don't like surprises I, would, I just want to know if the suits occupied yep so it is occupied and the cr whatever is inside is long dead. Oh. And at that point, we are going to cut back to the Nighthawk. Mm -hmm. Captain, you are on the bridge. Uh, let's see. These guys are not on the bridge. Um, let's find some stand-ins here. Everything can be at helm because Erkin is good at helm. Cool. Okay. Just clear, clearing out some clutter. There we go. The ship shudders from several small impacts, and um, proximity alerts begin to go off. Uh, uh, Loxley Ibrell looks out and goes, Captain, though that was not an uh, asteroid impact. Something's impaled us. Well, damage is for it. What did the uh, what's the deck? I'm reading I'm reading hull breaches on decks five, decks three, and deck one. And she immediately draws her phaser as intruder alerts begin to sound. Well, fantastic. Well, unfortunate. Let's. Red alert! Red alert! Intruders on on the ship. And the <clears throat> intruder alerts begin sounding all throughout the decks. Um, I would like to have someone roll for Loxley, Ibrell, and the ship. Just roll me two 
daring security we have rolls. Locks? And we have Loxley up. Or Loxley, yes. Um, so daring security, and then the ship can assist with. Let's roll computer security, please. And this she is has like, internal security as yeah. a focus. So. And this isn't going to be a difficulty. Just how many successes you roll will determine how well the crew does initially. This does not generate momentum. So that is two from Loxley. Good start. I'll take care of the chef. Mm -hmm. Whoops. All right, let me roll one more time here. Yep. Uh, can I have a second roll from Loxley, please? Oh, by all means. You did say it was a computer's uh, security yeah, Computer right? security, that's right. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, two successes each time. Uh, so Loxley's off. Your um, f fingers go into automatic mode as you immediately begin locking down sections of the ship. Uh, main engineering, uh, various weapon lockers, old, uh, sick bay, uh, astrometrics, the intelligence center, all go into immediately locked down. Force fields, um, anti-weapons dampening fields all go into place and your security teams are immediately deployed to begin fending off the intruders. Uh, several firefights immediately begin breaking out over the ship as uh, groups of three or four humanoids uh, dis um, appear to descend along, well, they sort of zip line in alongside big boarding cables and enter the ship that way, including a few that are on the bridge. And we're going to have some fun. So this individual... Uh, it would help if I had the oh, wrong button. So, despite so the force fields go up along the uh, turbo lift and access to the uh, auxiliary cargo bays in the rear, but there is a small explosion as a shaped charge detonates, destroying the uh, field emitters. And in walks these individuals. And without a word, they begin firing. And we're well, going I'm to... firing back. Yep, so now we are going to be an initiative. Add a turn. Okay. I believe that is everyone. I don't know if anyone trusts Togi to do anything, but I'll, I'll add him to the turn too. So, players get to go first, and I believe, Sengral, you wanted to... Uh, you or Locksleeve, or Vault, who wants to go? I am itching to uh, defend my ship right now, so I'm going to go. Okay. Captain's prerogative and all that. That so, is fine. Um, you get a side eye from Locksley. <laughs> certainly. But, uh, you know, it is my bridge. Let me make sure my sheet stops bugging out so I could actually roll my phaser. That would be nice. It would be. There we go. Because of the um because of the speed at which this incursion happened, would you be saying that everybody on the bridge would only be having their hand phasers right now? So we correct. wouldn't be able to reach for a weapon flocker? Yeah. Okay, hand so phasers I'll use only. My, my, my type two phaser here. And players, this might be important just to keep track of things. Um, in the G drive, there is a document that has the critical or uh, the deck plan for the USS Nighthawk, and it would have the various rooms and whatnot if necessary. Anyways, uh, so control plus security for a ranged attack with a difficulty of two. All right, then. I will... Unfortunately, I don't really think I have a focus that applies here, 
other than ship tactics. Possible, but I wouldn't assume that's no, going to be. That would not work. Used, I'm yeah, it wouldn't work for here. And your attack goes wide, caught by the uh, sudden appearance of these individuals. Okay. Uh, the one who is currently unhelmed and who is sporting a fairly long um, royal purple sort of long coat. He sort of looks like a... Uh, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Sort of looks like a buccaneer of ancient style. Uh, long, uh, A long cutlass at his uh, waist. Uh, style, uh, Heavily stylized flintlock pistol style is currently in his hand and is pointing towards the captain and he, without even muttering a word he is going to make an attack security Ooh. well that's an interesting uh, predicament as he moves to fire, his weapon immediately sort of sputters and spurts as he looks at it and just she he looks at it, mutters something, uh, sheaths it, and then draws his blade. So Question. That, yes. So, based on that, uh, that complication here, or at least how his weapon failing on him, Mm -hmm. I know you said it was stylized like a flintlock, but yep. was it actually a projectile? Or was uh, it energy based? It would be energy based. Okay. Okay. Uh, who else wishes to defend the bridge? I'll let Loxley okay. go. Okay. Uh, and this is an activation for Loxley, so. Check. Um, she will charge for a minor and then shoot. Okay. Control security, right? Mm hmm And I'll use one of those momentum as well. Okay, down to two. Oh. Baby. Wow. Oof. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's... She has a little head flip. That's all the momentum. Yeah. Okay, uh, who's she shooting? Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> so it's phasers is. I believe a hand phaser is two challenge dice plus security. Oh, she has a phaser type too, because she's security. Yes, she is. It's a three plus four, so seven. So how much uh, momentum is this going back into the pool? We spent yeah. one, we and gained... You gained four. So that puts us at five plus a floating? Uh, so max is six. Oh. So I think that puts you up to six total. I'll use one to reroll the zeros. Okay. Okay. There we go. So that's a grand total of eight. Cool. And two effects. Okay. Uh, I don't think effects do anything for type two. So I don't think so. Either. Oh, you so you get to add a, you get to add one. May I charged? I'm sorry. Yeah. So you charged. Uh, how do you wish that charge to take effect? Was it? Area attack, intense, so piercing, do, or vicious? Yeah. So if I do area, I'm sorry, I cut out myself. That would do the same damage to everybody? I believe that's the case, yes. Let's do area. Uh, so let's see. Uh, with So it uh, you target one object uh, within reach of the initial... Yeah. Attack level targets so once attack automatically affects any character or, de or object within reach of the initial target, then one additional within close range uh, for each effect rolled. 
So you've rolled a grand total of two effects. So yeah, you you hit everyone. Okay, so this man takes an injury. <coughs> That man takes an injury, and these three. Uh, so their their armor is heavier, um, but that is, yeah, that's still not enough. So they all take some injuries. And apparently, I can't apply the same icon to all at once. Say, Levy. So does it cost us one momentum to keep the initiative? Uh, yes, it would. From that yeah. right. Okay, I want to spend the one initiative, or to take that, keep the initiative, and Togi is going to go and stand in front of the captain, okay. use a second momentum, and grow to twice the size of a human being, and stand in front of the captain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Togi is here, and Togi is big. I've done nothing to deserve <laughs> this, but I'm happy nonetheless. <laughs> does that come with a trait now? Uh, yeah, so you yes, can choose a trait if you'd like. Can the captain ride on his shoulder? Uh, not. I mean, the captain could, but at this point we're talking ceiling now. The ceiling might be a problem. <laughs> okay. He's just kind of standing there growling. <laughs> okay, so that's that turn. This one is going to go. And I'm going to spend a threat for escalation, so they get to pull out some fairly cool looking rifles. And he's indiscriminately going to take a pot shot at Miss Ranny. <laughs> And I have them here somewhere. There's their sheet. Okay. Secure. Make mental note. Make a macro for this next time. Not enough, I'm afraid. The shot goes wide. Who wishes to go next? I'll go ahead and uh, step up again. I okay. gotta make up for these misses. Uh, so we, nah, we have to go through everyone's first. So we're still. Oh, I think Erkin is Erkin and um, Rani are the last two to go. My mistake. I misread the turn order. <laughs> yeah, my apologies. Uh, is it okay if we have uh, Rani shoot back, or should Erkin go instead? Either can. I don't think you guys can see Urkin's sheet, so if you just tell me if you want him to fire and I'll roll for him. She's going to fire. Oh, she, right. I mean we're gonna we're gonna defend she's gotta defend herself. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, uh mind if I do that roll? Go for it. Because I haven't done any, any I haven't learned any of the the combat yet. Uh, so yep. that is... So that's control security. Control Difficulty of two. Control security. Okay. Uh, do we want to spend any momentum on this? Uh, yeah, we can. Okay. We have I'll a few. spend one. So let's spend one. And then does not have a focus. So unless it's mining equipment and it has to be a, a mining laser of some sort. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't you can have use that. phasers for mining. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but not so. hatch phasers. Oof. That's a lot of zeros. But no complications, so. And there. Spent the momentum. Okay. Okay. Uh, this slaver is going to pull out a small hand size glass object and throw it into the general vicinity of Ibral, the captain, and Togi. And of 
course I close their character sheet because I am a bad GM. So here we go again. Yeah, you said it, not me. Yeah. Okay. I will spend threat to add another dice. And the two is what is needed. Okay. Uh, so for Captain Singral and Loxley, I need you to please roll me a fitness plus medicine test with a difficulty of three. And so we use momentum on this. Yep, most definitely for the best. Is there a focus? Um, if you have, it's chance to resist being knocked out. So if you have like physical resistance or um, toughness. And phasers? No, no. Um, immune system would work. Okay. Uh, <laughs> immune system as a focus. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who else is going to spend the momentum here? So. Okay. And I okay. said that was what? Difficulty two? Three. Three. Was it? Yeah, I said yeah, three. three. Yeah, three. Yeah, three. Okay. Um, so you are. You both take uh, seven points of damage as the initial shock knocks you. Well, there's no effect, so you guys aren't actually knocked down. But then again, you also failed the follow-up test, which basically um, electric electrifies you into basic submission. Uh, the two of you um, feel that a taser has gone off inside your bodies and you crumple to the floor. Uh, you also take seven points of stress, which is enough for an injury, I believe. So crumpling to the floor would be a good injury. Either way, well, you can spend your determination if you wish to stay conscious, or that's it for the fight. I'm not going down without a fight. I'm spending my determination. Okay. Yeah. Loxley as well. All right. Uh, what values are you using? That's just it. Does she have... If she have doesn't any, have any values. Then she can't get back up. Can she use uh, two momentum? I, I think the rule is to avoid the injury. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's also a possible... Yes. Okay, so, yeah, my apologies. So that would be... Yep, so you could perfect. spend two momentum to avoid it, but that would drain your momentum pool. So I, the numbers uh, is important. I'm not going to uh, choose to do so. Okay. I'm going to take the hit. Okay. And, and then we want to keep up Loxley. I'd say keep Loxley up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we're, so we're keeping Loxley up, but I'm spending my determination to stay up. Okay. Okay. Momentum spent. All right. Um, that is this slaver's gone. That slaver has gone. And I believe Alec is the last one to do something. Um, what do you guys want Alec to do? Fire. Makes sense. Okay. Yep. Or you can fly the ship upside down and try to. <laughs> no, let's try not the grappling. That's that's what we should do. <laughs> Terrible idea. Don't do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh. So. Oh wow. He's got um. Does he have anything for combat? He does not. Okay. He prays to the province. Yeah. Pretty... <laughs> Basically. Okay. Control security. Throw an orb at him, it'll be fine. Do that. No focus. Yeah. Uh, Erkin does it. Cool. Uh, Erkin's uh, phaser seven. Oh, wow. He's got high security. Okay. Seven challenge dice for Erkin. Now, which one do you want Erkin to shoot at? Uh, we're going to go with the big dude here. I figured you would. Of course. I mean, if he's going to telegraph himself like that, we're going to focus. Of course. Uh, so he does do four damage. Uh, he is injured. Uh, how much stress has he taken? That. Minus.
minus one for that. Okay, he is still going. Cool. Okay. And I believe that is the end of turn order. Everyone has gone. And it's now the other guy's start. Captain, do you got quick to action or something like that? I do not, unfortunately. Ah. I wish I did, and this specifically right now. Yeah, Helty kind of does. He's on the other ship. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, he is going, uh, despite uh, noticeably limping on one side of his uh, body, coincidentally from uh, where Loxley's uh, phaser blast impacted him the hardest. Uh, he takes two steps over, points his uh, knife right at um, Ensign Rani. The knife go glows green, and you can sort of hear a sort of a simmering electrical field around it. As he turns to you and goes, I wasn't expecting Starfleet. However, I will not turn down such a prize. Surrender your ship, Captain. Or she dies. I'm afraid I don't make those sorts of deals. Let her go and then we can talk. He makes a quick motion and just the other ones move in a little bit. Not really taking their turn, so they're not really doing an action. Yes, that's what I'm... Well, if it wasn't for Starfleet making deals in the first place, we wouldn't be in this situation. But oh, okay. here we are. Care to elaborate? Yes, if it wasn't for the your other Starfleet friends, the Vitaris would not have found my base and blown it to oblivion, leaving us out here. Well, although I'm uncertain what the repercussions of the actions of the other people in the Expanse if there's some grievance that you have with us, I'm certain it's something that we could talk out. If you would prefer to end this assault, we can move to a neutral lo location. We can discuss terms. Mm. He sort of licks his lips uh, absent-mindedly. No deal, Captain. Your ship is going to be ours. As your crew... Well, that's up to you, really. See, we could be nice, leave them on a planet somewhere, let your other Starfleet P personnel know about you once we've successfully pillaged what we want from this ship. You'll get it back. I'm sure Starfleet can rebuild it. Or, I mean, there, at our count, there's roughly 200 individuals on this craft, minus the seven or eight that have vacated it, due to the trap and yes that was us that would be I know we are in the we are in the market for new slaves I mean they're not as good as the Scorpy but so I'm going to attempt to actually well it's got, I have to be able to read this man so I'm gonna see if I can make an empathic role and okay. try to figure out his angle all right is he actually, is he here with murderous intent, or is he here unwillingly, or... Right. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Uh, this would be, a, I would think, insight plus con test. Or no, um, presence plus con would work, I believe. Uh, difficulty of two, because it's the first time you've spoken to one of these individuals. Mm -hmm. Um, You know... Cold readings, um, empathy, telepathy, um, anything like that for a focus would work? I have investigation and pattern recognition. Mm, neither of those really would work, I'm afraid. Okay, then. Still, that's enough. As you pick your my, as you enter into his mind, it sort of feels very similar to that of maybe a Vulcan. It's a very disciplined mind, but one that is cold and calculating. Um, he doesn't seem to want to actively kill anyone at this stage, so it's not murderous intent. 
but he is very truthful that he will kill to achieve his um, goals. Well, I'm still going to... I'm going to look over to uh, Loxley, and I'm going to see if I can give her that subtle eye signal. So, okay, well, if necessary, let's fuck, let's beam these guys out of here. Oh, transporter test. Oh, good idea. It is going to be a transporter test. I mean, oh. I don't really, at this point, since, you know, my, 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 you, what is, what is that line from Breaking, from Breaking Bad? This is my private domicile, and I will not be harassed, so I don't really care <laughs> if we beam them into space or not. Okay. Uh, this will be a daring plus engineering test. Uh, ship can assist with, I believe it's computers plus engineering. Or no, sorry, sensors engineering. Um, because they're not on a pad and you're not beaming them to a pad. Uh, this will be a difficulty of four. Plus. And because of the current state of the ship, I will spend a couple points of threat and make the challenge, or the complication range, 18 to 20. Who's making the transporter roll? Loxley. Okay. And in this instance, so, I will allow security systems to work as a focus. Okay. So, you said that would be what for her? Um, daring plus engineering. Want me to go is there any the way? Uh, is yeah. there any way that I can assist at least socially, since I'm attempting to talk to them as a distraction? Um. Yeah, I'll let you. I'll let you assist with a presence command. Um. Okay. Ooh. Holy crap! That's uh, five successes. <laughs> we don't help anyway, but okay. hey. Yeah. I appreciate um, the promotion. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, somebody, uh, so Loxley, if you could please roll me 1d20, and I will determine what happens based on that. Since I'm assuming you're not bothering to put in such things like where they're going to. So. If they want to see the ship, well, let them see the ship. The outside of the ship? That's a good way to see it. <laughs> Okay, 17. Okay, well. Would you still like me to make this presence command roll? Well, they're no longer here, so it no longer matters. Fantastic. Okay, roll shift. The uh, drow, or the draven, I should say. Not drow, <laughs> that's completely the wrong universe. They are now the draven. Deal with it. Um, the draven individuals take one step forward and begins a, a threatening slash towards uh, Ensign Rani, who steps back and just as the knife would connect with her it sort of loses all momentum, clatters to the floor as all four of them materialize, or dematerialize I should say <clears throat> a loud uh... <clears throat> the intruder alarms are still blaring however uh, several of the ship sections are not doing as well as the bridge, but at least the bridge is, for the moment, secure, uh, despite for the fact that this door frame is not actually present. It's. I kind of want you to switch forward. maps and have their tokens just sitting in the nebula. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I'm afraid that 17... Uh, anything above 15 would have been uh, actually into the security, or uh, the brig, as that is. Oh, man. Those are the wrong groups of tokens. So they are pr still present on board the ship, but for the moment, they are not your main concern. Guess that works. Uh, Loxley goes over to check on Ranny real quick. Mm -hmm. Well, I have well, at this point, don't worry about her because I mean, I'll I'll go ahead and take care of her, Loxley. What we need to do right now is to continue to secure the ship, secure the bridge, 
go over to those weapons lockers. Let's get these Tithely phaser out, rifles out. Mm-hmm. And I'll come over to Urkin to recall the shuttle and the away team and inform them of exactly what's going on, of the trap that hopefully they didn't spring yet. And let's exactly try to uh, repel these people first and see if we can... Just... But don't move us out of the nebula yet until we actually get the away team back. Fair enough. Um, let's... Do they still have cables attached to the ship? Uh, there are several, yes. And I will... Is it possible to shoot them out with phasers? We'll get to that shortly. Uh, we're just going to have... So we're going to have a scene change. So that one momentum you had is no longer present. No. And we are going to go and cut back to the theater of the mind where you guys are on the ship or on the um, the solar sailing vessel have just realized that it's completely dead. Can we access the computers at all? Or is the ship just not even... Um, that would be a uh, insight engineering or insight security role uh, with a difficulty of two. Okay. To see what the current s- status of the vessel is. Go for it. Yep. That is one degree of failure. Now, given how much I like threat today, I am willing to let that succeed if you give me one point of threat. Go for it. Sure. Okay. Um, So, uh, at first glance, the console that the uh, the, uh, exosuit or space suit is quote-unquote manning, it does appear active. There is power, there is a little bit of indicators blinking around. Um, however, upon closer inspection, you realize that it is a bit of a ruse. Um, there is a small um, battery uh, hidden inside the console that is giving just enough juice to the communications array and to the console itself to mimic a uh, life or mimic a active communication system. Other than that, this ship is as dead as its pilot. Is that where the life sign was? Correct. The was life it... sign. <coughs> uh, the life sign that you're detecting was being generated artificially from the a device attached to the suit. Okay. All right. Can we get any information about the spy why we're on the ship? Um, have we heard from the the Nighthawk at this point saying that's a trap? Uh, no one has hailed you yet. No. Um, I suppose that Jefferson could be taking a look at things and seeing something might be amiss. Just a thought. Because I feel like at this point, once we find out that there's only one thing there, it's only faking a life signal, we'd probably hail back to the ship saying something. Yeah, that would be a good thing to do. What do we think about disabling this um, this model? Well, that's what I was going to say. I wanted to see if uh, engineering. I want to see if we can get any information um, about these people or what this was. Um, and same thing with you, Doctor, about what this species is. Um, and I'm going to contact the ship and tell them that that something's up. Okay. That sounds like an excellent idea to find out. Uh, you mean like scan the, the the body and just kind of find out about this species? Yeah. Or... Yes, okay. exactly. Please. Okay, then I'll do an I guess an inspection of the ship and see if I can determine anything about their culture. Okay. Yeah, anything about them. Yeah. Okay. Um. So that sounds like a few rolls. So we'll do the medical roll first. Um. So roll me reason plus medicine, please. Uh, difficulty Reason. of one because well actually difficulty two because this is still the first time you personally have encountered this species oh yeah he's fascinated by this um we don't got no momentum so here we go yep. um xenobiology xenobiology would work oh yeah oh okay um i'm going to take that threat and use uh it actually hmm? oh i'm sorry to interrupt i have uh no never mind that's momentum ignore me Okay. Ah. 
Um, so, uh, in your preparation for the Lasai Expanse, you were able to read through the uh, logs of the previous of Deep Space 15's previous chief medical officer, uh, Galen, uh, who had it performed a rather thorough dissection of one of these corpses uh, several months back. And it turns out that this is indeed known as a Scorpi. And they are a twisted amalgamation of a humanoid upper torso and a <coughs> scorpion uh, torso and tail, which should not be possible. Um, so kind of like a centaur? Kind of like, like upper a, yeah. half? Precisely okay. like a centaur. And they um, didn't name it a Scorpar? No, they did not. They named it the Scorpi. They named themselves the Scorpi. Don't, don't diss their culture. Don't um, judge. Don't judge. <laughs> um, Though I'm concerned of the fact that we keep running into these things, and every one of them is dead. So, <laughs> I mean, you've only encountered, I believe, if my count is right, you've encountered four of their species. So, I mean, that's not really a large sample size, but... <laughs> Um, anyways, Everyone was dead. Anyway, because it um, was their cargo. It was their cargo that actually the the original DNA for the Togerlai is. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyways, so their upper body is a vertebrate mammalian humanoid style, and their lower torso is an invertebrate uh, scorpion. And there is literally no records of an invertebrate invertebrate species evolving naturally. Fascinating. So, their ooh, th uh, their, you know, if you want to take its corpse back for future analysis, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, uh, that feels unethical. Samples. I think I, I I think I want to take a sample. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Um, just, you know, skin samples, just a little bit what I can without defiling the body too much, because we don't know if that'll make them very upset that we took something of theirs. Understandable. Um, and I want to take detailed scans. My thought process is I want to replicate this back so that we can kind of get a, a general approximation of what this looked like, you know, when they were running around. Understandable. Uh, okay, so the Shran, I believe you were going to be looking at the culture and other things mm -hmm. um so this you're going to be looking at their culture so this is going to be uh insight plus uh command yeah insight plus command i think would be a good one for this possibly insight science if you have cultural studies or yeah let's use science for this uh insight science uh cultural studies um yeah, cultural studies. Oh, perfect. That would work for a focus. What's the difficulty? Mm -hmm. What's the difficulty? Uh, difficulty of th uh, difficulty of two, because thankfully previous encounters have allowed the universal translator to read their language. And it would have an issue of me uh, using threat. And now, no, I do All right. this. All right. Only resource we got. Okay, that is three degrees of success. So that is one momentum for you guys. One threat for me. Wahaha. And what happens here, or what you've learned, is that their home world is not too far away. Only a couple sectors over. Although that much was gained uh, through previous scans of their computer records. Uh, oh, I just realized I rolled, the wrong, I rolled the wrong thing. I rolled engineering instead oh. of... Um... Science? What's your science? Or what's your science score? Science is two, engineering is five. Ah, okay. So let's see. Okay, that would me. Okay, so based on the numbers rolled, uh, yeah, only you would you would only have one success out of that, I'm afraid. Okay, I so I can have bold, so I can reroll one. Ah, you have bold science. Cool. Oh, sorry. Ah, oh, you're right. It's bold engineering. Ah. Never mind. Okay. Um, so you're, you're able to pick up a few things. Um, uh, this does, uh, this appears to have been a, a guild ship or a f potentially a clan or a guild. I am something along that line of possession. So it's not a, 
it's not quite private. It's more of a mercantile guild structure that you're able to pick up. Uh, looks like this ship probably sat or housed maybe four or five individuals of Scorpy size. Um, and their navigation system appears to be more based along, like, um, not sensors as one would think of, but more navigating by stars. They hold constellations in very high regard. And they're pretty much a trader type ship. Okay, so just basic stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Is now, there any cargo on board? Uh, there was a fairly decent sized cargo bay, but it has long since been stripped. Figured as much. Just out of the desk. Okay. All right, while they're doing all that, I'm contacting the Nighthawk, and basically, yes, uh, Commander for sure to Nighthawk. And the Nighthawk is currently not responding. Bashir to Davis. Uh, what's going on out there? I'm unsure. Uh, yeah. But I mean, I'm going to see if, what I could do to actually contact the Nighthawk. Okay. Seems like okay. I'm just not responding. Yes. Um, even okay. The Nighthawk doesn't respond to the shuttle's more powerful communication systems either. Probably because they're in the midst of fighting off an attack on the bridge. And no one's paying attention to the little bleeping. Attention to the K. Yeah. That's rude. <laughs> Will we go to the answering service? Oh, no. Um, all right, guys. Let's wrap up. We're heading back. We're not getting any communications from the Nighthawk. Yes, sir. I'm all finished yeah. here. Okay. We'll go back to the nebula. As the shuttle. Will we center for stream? Ah, wrong button. So, what the shuttle sees as it nears the Nighthawk. There we go. Is that the Nighthawk is currently at an odd angle. There is a new ship that has appeared in orbit, or near it. And there, uh, through several of the small asteroids, there have been... Um, several asteroids have launched very thick cables into the Nighthawk. And this ship here uh, has a fairly long, nasty gun-type object pointed directly at the Nighthawk. Mm -hmm. Now let me zoom in for stream because this is not a very good background for stream. There we go. That might be better. Commander Helsing, why don't you take weapons? Let's see what's out there. Already there. Yeah. Yeah. So I should mention that the alien ship is a scale 4. USS Nighthawk, of course, is a scale 5, and the origins of the Harpoons are scale 2, and there are 5 of them. You cut out for me when you said... Oh, yeah, apparently. there's their only, scale. Yeah, okay. well, the scale of only that ship. So what was that? Uh, that is a scale 4 ship. Gotcha. Oh. And you're a scale Weird. 2 shuttle. So, just... Putting it out there. Yeah, appreciate that. So, so ramming speed then. Down. <laughs> I don't think we have weapons on the shuttle. Um, They're not did showing. I, did I Stick not... your pages out the windows. Oh yeah, I didn't actually give it. Sh... Yeah, I'd say that for the bare minimum, it would have a phaser array, or actually a phaser bank, I would say. And micro torpedoes. Yes, yes, that too. <laughs> No, not not for something like the Type XX. It's more meant more for a stealth mission than, you know. Quantum remote. torpedoes? No. What part of no? No. <laughs> oh. USD <laughs> drive? Go bigger. Uh, oh. Okay. Well, if we open up Comms Channel, I can snark torpedoes at them. How about that? Uh, oh, so phaser cannons. A phaser bank. 
uh, which means that it does, I think, three points of damage. I'm just going off my memory here, and it has versatile too. Cool. Okay. Getting more helpful to shoot up, to shoot up the. Um... Probably. Throwing that out there. Activate the stealth. Uh, so by it's the time. Passive stealth. Uh, so by the time. Oh, I'm sorry, I keep interrupting. I apologize. No, my bad. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You. You know. Come on. You're the GM. You know. You have that power. <laughs> Oh, that's right. It is passive stealth because we can't do anything. Not to mention they are aiming at us. They'll probably wonder what's up. There we go. Now it has a name tag. Uh, about the time that you make your way about halfway between the derelict Scorpy ship and the Nighthawk, uh, Captain, you have regained control of the bridge. And Vault quickly uh, resumes her position and says, Captain, uh, the, the shuttle's hailing us, sir. Uh, on audio. <laughs> Captain, um, seems to be a trap. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, what was your first guess? Unfortunately, <laughs> we all fell for it. Uh, so right. we have a large ship with a big gun pointed at us, and it seems to be cabled to you. <laughs> well, right now, unfortunately, from what I can tell, it seems like you guys are safer out there than you are on the ship. I'm not quite sure what you can do out there, but your best advantage right now seems to be the uh, shuttlecraft's passive sensors. But right now, I'm busy trying to get regain control of the ship. Uh, if you're open, if you have suggestions, I'm certainly open to them. Ah. <laughs> uh you take care of our airship. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Good luck, Captain. <laughs> okay. So, back on board the Nighthawk. Ooh, big bridge. Let's zoom that ah! Out. Big talking. <laughs> yeah. Mind you, the scene is over. He goes yeah. back. This scene is over. He shrinks back down to normal togi size. Why can't I resize his token? Oh, I know why. There we go. <clears throat> now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So reports are coming in over the ship. Um, the the enemy has taken over. Um, they have taken over main engineering. Uh, they have taken over sick bay. Several of the weapons lockers, while locked out, are currently inaccessible. <clears throat> uh, there is resistance going on inside both Astrometrics and the Intelligence Center. And uh, the mess hall has been locked down. And individuals, or individual crewmen are being dragged into the main cargo bay for temporary storage. Um, currently, the brig is reporting that the prisoners are secure. However, there is a force of enemy drave, or Draven heading to that location. So, you, so the brig are, already has Draven prisoners? Or the, that's, the Nighthawk that's, already have prisoners? The Draven ha that's where uh, Loxley beamed the gotcha uh, enemies. I thought uh, you said that because we had a 70, they were elsewhere on the ship and not the brig. Or maybe I just misheard that. I may have misspoke, but that's uh, because there was a 25% chance that they would end up in the brig due to automatic uh, so in, intruder, ah, intruder diversion or prevention protocols. <laughs> Well, in any case, they're in the brig now. Yeah. And they're, but well, hope not for a lot. But <laughs> the way things are going right now. Quite possibly. <clears throat> well, do we want to try the same trick again? I mean, I do, but I want to make sure if we try it that we're gonna, we get to do it all at once. 
I want to make sure so, if we're gonna if we're gonna muster the energy or the tactical or the technical knowledge that we can make sure that we get a large majority of this force incapacitated. So I don't want to try it again because they're probably. I don't want to try it again right now until we're absolutely certain that we can pull it off. Um, at this point, your screen kicks to the main screen kicks to life. And there is an individual calling you from engineering. On screen oh. is a female draven uh, who appears to have uh, an augmented uh, eye. Not Borg, just augmented. You know, cyber, cyborg kind of thing. And she is in engineering where you can see in the background several of the uh, masked draven slavers corralling the engineers and forcing them out. Is this the bridge? Are you... Where's Where's my brother? Hasn't he taken the ship yet? You're not my brother. Unless he's decided to, you know, apply whiteface again. <laughs> that was fun the last time. Anyways, who are you? I'm Captain Sengrel of the Starship Nighthawk, which, I might add, you are currently intruding upon. Yes, well, it's such a lovely ship. It's got so many toys that I haven't had a chance to play with yet. So many new organics to look at. You must be new to this area of space. Ooh, are those spots? You... Ooh, can you turn your head roughly 90 degrees, look to the left, please? I'm very curious. Are those spots, are are they hereditary in pattern? Are they random? I'm very curious. Can I dissect you and find out? If you were so interested, you should have scheduled a play date. You, oh, playful, playful captain. I like you already. I can't wait till Skitters comes and comes and grabs you and tears you piece by piece, and I get to look at the remains. <laughs> well, why don't we just skip to the end for both of our six? What do you want? Well, my brother wants to do all these boring things like get and get all the get some new technology and escape this blasted sector of space forever. Me, I'm just happy to play, and this ship has all sorts of new stuff to play with. Oh, have I introduced myself? My name's Zilla. Pleasure. And she looks at the warp core. Ooh, that's antimatter. Matter, antimatter. That is a, would that be? Yes, I think that would be compatible with my ship. Tell me, where's which one of you might be the uh, lead engineer around here? She looks at the Vulcan. You're the big, tall guy. You must be in charge. You hear a small uh, zap off uh, screen as the as a couple engineers uh, sort of yelp with surprise. <sighs> Why must the big ones just not talk so much? Yeah, well, I'll get the answers one way or another, Captain. So I'm going to go ahead and sit back in my chair, and I'm going to begin a sentence, mm -hmm. and then I'm just going to tap my cap my. Uh, the panel on my chair to make it look like interference and we're just going to cut connection okay because <laughs> I'm, I'm not first of all i'm not listening to this anymore but second <gasps> i don't want it to actually seem like i'm the one that's cutting them off because all i can ascertain right now is that they still don't have what they want and regardless of whether the fact that they want to threaten my crew that still gives me more time to plan all right sorry we're flying through a tunnel I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're the ones that attacked on my ship, so we're going to make it like this is their fault. <laughs> we're in a nebula right now. We Can you... No, I... Like... Yeah. Uh, it's at all this right. point that uh, Loxley, uh, your communication... Or your panel signals all clear in the intelligence center. Uh, whoever was holding out there appears to have managed to secure that area. Roger. All right, so we have intruders on basically every deck, and we need to make sure that we secure the most vital points of the ship first. Main engineering is most definitely a given, and we are not, even though we've gotten the all clear, we're uncertain whether or not the intelligence center is still completely clear of any forces. So even though they're signaling, let's make sure, confirm with the Starfleet signature, and then we'll go from here. Additionally, uh, let's mount up, and we can't, I, we can't take the turbo lifts. So let's use the best. Let's use the best resource we got, and we'll just site to site transport to the intelligence center. Okay. So we're not going to try to transport the people out of engineering. Oh, we will. But I mean, like right now, um, I'm 
right now this is the order that i out of care well out of character well i'm giving this order to Loxley and the rest of the people on the bridge well i'm still going to remain and try to uh quote unquote keep uh the draven and engineering company roger that okay so who's going to the intelligence center Okay. Uh, Loxley. Okay. Uh, Loxley is. Uh, Ranny hasn't actually been injured yet, right? She hasn't nope. been. Uh, she was just uh, threatened. She yeah. Was so threatened. Loxley, you're still. Ta oh no, you avoided injury. You're fine, but you have some taken stress damage. Check seven. Yeah. Then as I think Loxley should go. Tell you should go, and um. In that case, uh. We'll Ronnie? determine what happened. Well. I was thinking about Rani. Yeah, let's take Rani, okay. and I'll just be Erkin and I. As long as the uh, as long as we're certain that the bridge is secure, then I have no problems remaining here alone. And if okay. any case, in any case, the bridge actually does get breached, then we'll just transfer all prior controls to the intelligence center if there is an all clear. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so you guys are going to beam down into the intelligence center. I believe this is the first time this has been shown on screen. So a quick thank shout out to Falk uh, two zero zero nine for drafting a pretty wicked cool intelligence center. Okay. Uh, so what you see down here is uh, Specialist Calix, uh, who is the intelligence officer, and let's say that you also find a security officer Yas Zonar who is heavily injured from a nasty uh, dagger wound to the side uh, there's also uh, several unconscious draven that have been stunned into oblivion that have sort of been piled up in a corner somewhere uh, the specialist quickly uh, takes a quick look which was completely redundant she takes a quick look at the people showing up prepared to blast you, realize that you're not uh, Draven. Stands down and quickly brings, without even mentioning a word, she will go to the control panel and start bringing up the MSD of the ship. Currently indicating roughly uh, 50 Draven life signs on board, uh, spread out among all decks, heavy concentration in engineering, smaller concentration in sick bay. Uh, Astrometrics sadly has fallen. <clears throat> um, the uh, the mess hall has also been taken, and many of the crew have been thrown into the engine or not engineering into the large cargo bay. She looks at Loxley, and I believe Loxley is the current ranking officer. Oh, boy. All right. Um, Jalex, everything here, you ready for the captain? He might have to transfer um, command controls down here, but don't do that until his order. Also, get a a lock on all of the Draven that are on this ship, transporter locks. And we will beam them out on a moment's notice per the captain's order. Lieutenant, that would be... I can attempt that from here, Lieutenant, but if we can secure one of the transporter rooms, we'd also have to make sure that they don't disable the transporters. That's not a system that runs through here. I'm afraid, but I will do my best. Uh, got it. Captain um, Instant Evil. Captain? Oh. Captain's gone. Oh, Captain's here. <laughs> Most definitely. Go ahead. I'm still fiddling with my chair to make it look like I'm cutting it out. <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> gotta, maintain, gotta maintain the ruse. Keep her interest. That's it. Um, Specialist Crux had a, gr a great idea. We have to take the transporter room to make sure the transporters will be operational for us when we need them. I don't disagree. On the phone. Oh. 
but that sounded like actual interference. Everyone good? Yeah, we're yeah. good. Cool. And upon further review of the situation, I feel like this is something, if we're going to secure the transporter room, I feel like we have the, depending on the security personnel, we might be able to knock out two birds with no, one stone. But um, how many security officers do you have available to you, Oxley? Right now, just myself and uh, um, Yum and Yaz, Zonar. If the intelligence center is secure, you're supposed to take everybody but Specialist Calix and Anson Rani and make your way to the transporter room to secure it. Afterwards, the, after that is immediately done, and we could ascertain the uh, transporter locks on the rest of the Draven, we will flood uh, all decks with an estesine gas. At that same point in time, you will use that transporter pad and simultaneously transport the Draven and your cells to main engineering to rescue the rest of the crew members we have here. But obviously, like I said, just in we're flooding it with a resting gas in case the transporter fails. In which case, you should go be prepared to uh, wear breast masks. Candy, so you want to send the Draven, all the Draven transported to engineering? Oh, no. I, I, if possible, let's... Uh, Let's actually send them to the brig. Okay, that's what I was... Okay, got it. But if it's full, I don't mind losing a few in transport, if you know what I mean. I'm not an engineer or transporter expert, so... <laughs> All right, we're on our way. Um, Togi, Yaz, with me. All right. Okay. Okay. And then um, we'll make as fast as we can to the nearest transporter room where we can stop, get protective masks, and hopefully if there's an arms locker on the way where we can upgrade weapons, we'll do that. And armor if we can. Okay. So you are currently on deck three. The intelligence suite is on deck three. Uh, the armory is on deck four. And the transporter room is on deck five. And depending on how you wish to move between decks might determine some what happens in in between. And how long. So I am secretly keeping track of time. Well, okay, I'm no longer secretly keeping track of it. But time... <laughs> But I am keeping track of time, so however long you take determines what these guys do. Roger. Um, Calix, do we have any Draven uh, between here and the armory on deck four? Uh, she will poke it. They've just, they have been unable to access the lockers within the armory due to the lockdown. However, I am detecting two in two Draven outs life forms outside the armory, probably keeping us out more than anything. All right. Also, what about it? By the up to the transporter room, between uh, here and there. I'm detecting one Draven life sign in the transporter room, and two as well outside. There's roving patrols. But with with uh, proper timing and keeping someone here to coordinate the movement, we should be able to bypass them relatively easily. Roger. Well, let's make a beeline straight for the transport room. We can get uh, we can get. Environment, protective breathing gear there. Okay. Uh, for future reference, uh, who wants to take Rani and who wants to take Zonar? Just so I'm not NPCing them all. Uh, I could take Rani. Okay. 
Oh, who doesn't want to take that blue, that smiling blue face? Boom. Captain's orders. I'm going to order the Shran. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the blue man. All right. Um, so because this is this is the first time we're seeing Zonar, he does not get an advancement, but Rani does. Oh. <clears throat> okay, so while they're moving about the ship, are, is the shuttle folks doing anything? Yes. Okay. I want to go passive, um, and I want to basically... <sighs> I don't really want him to do this, but since they're aiming right at us i want to see if i can like a small jump to the nighthawk like a warp jump yes okay that is doable oh, that's not supposed to be Oops, there i do this <clears throat> okay um so in case this is of any or changes plans in any, in any way shape or form uh, the shuttlecraft is equipped with two um, standard issue uh, zero gravity suits, or environmental suits, I should say. You know. Oh, just in fun. Case. Okay. Um, is that flavor ship pointed at the shuttle or at the Nighthawk? It's pointed at the Nighthawk. Nighthawk. Yeah. Yeah. So that might change what we were planning to do with that uh, micro warp jump. Why do you say that? Oh, well, it's not pointed at us in the shuttle. Okay. That's true. I guess I, I, I just basically wanted to get over there as quickly as possible and like disconnect oh, those gotcha. cables. Because gotcha. <laughs> my plan was, yeah, to pop up, like basically cloak, pop up and start um, just getting out of those, get firing at those cables to release it. Okay. Um, so if you want to do a micro warp jump, this is going to be a control plus con or daring plus con on Jefferson's part. And the shuttle can assist with computers plus con in this case because you're trying to be precise. Uh, I'll go ahead and do a uh, control. Jefferson will go ahead and make a uh, control plus con. Okay. Difficulty? Uh, oh, sorry. Difficulty of... Well, just because... Uh, difficulty 2, just because the nebula is... Well, the nebula. I see. And he's got small craft, too, so... He does have small craft. He does. And I will not spend a point of momentum. So we're going to keep this here just in case we need it for something else. Look at all this training pay. <laughs> Holy crap! Nice. Okay, that's two momentum right off the bat. What does the ship roll? Somebody have the ship, or I can. I have it up. What would it be rolling? Uh, computers plus con. And nothing from the ship, so that's just two momentum. Okay. Okay, and you immediately warp right there. <laughs> and with... Wow, what... Okay, so you are now here. Um, do you immediately stop moving so that the passive sensors kick in? Yes. Okay. Um, <coughs> Quick the, stop. The ship is going to roll just to see what it does. Uh, just to see if it sees anything amiss. That should have rolled. Oh, I know why it's not rolling too. I'm not using the macro. Well, that's one for the ship. And let me just roll for the crew. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So you uh, you warp in 
and it doesn't look like uh, the ship is making a it doesn't look like the sh slaver ship has made any noticeable change to your immediacy okay lieutenant commander helsing fire <laughs> one moment oh, oh, i'm whispering Commander Bashir, Commander Helsing, I thought. Just I even though we were this is some crazy precision, but considering that Davis noticed, at least to his knowledge, doesn't feel like he's been noticed. He thinks he has a, a little bit of time to suggest an alternate plan. Okay. Go ahead, Jefferson. <laughs> in instead of just actually firing our weapons array. What if we knocked out two birds with one stone, considering that our first micro jump was successful? What if we leaked dry, our warp drive plasma and then ignited it to uh, both ships? The Nighthawk probably has the ability, the ability to sustain damage from such an explosion like this without completely, you know, causing structural, uh, uh, structural failing. Okay. Hawk's only a little bit bigger. Uh, let's give it a shot. Okay, so this can be done one of two ways. Uh, the first is okay. you could do a daring engineering test to just cause it to leak, or you could just spend the two momentum to create the advantage. <laughs> what do you think, look, uh, Lieutenant Commander? The sh the sh ah, the sh you think? You oh, you know what I, what I would want to do. Uh, okay, I, I figured. Go for it. So, what's the role? Uh, this is going to be a daring plus engineering daring role daring task. Uh, this will be a difficulty of... I'm going to set this a difficulty of three to get it right, just with the nebula being weird. And the ship can assist with... Let's do engines plus con. All right. Okay. Nothing from the shuttlecraft. All right, so do you, guys, do you say you want me to use um, threat or momentum? Well, if you use threat, you get to take advantage of the bold engineering. All right, sounds good. <laughs> I love it. Wow, nice. Thank God. Okay, that's three there degrees of success. <laughs> the, en uh, the engines leak plasma precisely the, where uh, the Shran intends it to, creating a uh, sheen of uh, rainbow-hued um, iridescence between the slaver ship and the Nighthawk. Um, sadly, this does take the shuttle's warp engines offline, but you can do, you can do stuff with it now. Who's got the match? <laughs> okay, I think I'll take that. So would that be like control security? Or... Uh, yep, yeah. control security. And uh, because it's point blank range, this will just be a difficulty one. Okay. <clears throat> Don't blow us up. I know. I'm to say to do that. Uh, gentlemen, do you think we should move away from the explosion before we set it off? Do cool Starfleet officers look at explosions? <laughs> well, we're no. caught in them instead, I guess. <laughs> okay, that is one degree, or that's uh, two degree success. So that's one momentum. Excellent. However, where is that? There it is. B 
because you happen to be so close to it. I'm going to roll one of those. Shut up, Doctor. Okay. Um, the shuttle suffers one breach to its computer system and one breach to its structure. And because I get to roll that, I will roll one challenge dice. I told you, farther away! Nope. Uh, thankfully, the safety systems of the uh, shuttle allow you to, or prevent anyone from getting seriously injured. Just sort of knocked about as the shuttlecraft is sort of spun around. Um, however, if someone could please roll me... Let's say, someone roll me six challenge dice, please. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, six and three, plus the effects. And it's the effects that I'm interested in. Um, so Bashir rolled first, so we'll take his roll. And that is a grand oh. total of three effects. Okay. So what that does is it will push the slaver ship away by three. It will push the Nighthawk away by two because it is one scale higher. <clears throat> but it doesn't cause enough damage to deal a breach to either to either ship. <laughs> what did it do to the cables? Ah, that's the interesting thing. Um, yes. So because they are attached on non well the there's the base of the cables were more tethered in place using a gra something akin to a inertial dampener field which in just to stabilize it against uh, movements or sudden movements and you know trying to and destabilize warp fields, that sort of thing. It was not built for to deal with such a sh sudden pressure shock. So they're blown around along with the Nighthawk. Um, some of them were actually wrapping around the Nighthawk, uh, like a like a ball, like a ball on a str like a ball on a stick on a string, just wraps right around it. Uh, let's roll one d five and see what happens. Yeah. Um, so all of them wrap around the ship, creating a Gordian's knot of um, tethered cable. Um, yeah, it's pretty much the ship. If the ship could be tied up, it is now thoroughly tied up. I was rolling to see how many of them did that, and the rest would have broken off. And now that they all rolled in. Fun! Okay. Um... Captain, on the bridge, everything is going more or less okay. Um, uh, while you got, while the uh, team is moving towards the transporter room, there is a small explosion um, away from the ship, and the ship is blown a couple, about 50 kilometers due starboard. Urkin quickly arrests the ship's movement, and the slaver ship is also knocked off course. Everything is more or less stabilized, and then all of a sudden there's several small thuds against the hull as the uh, harpoon cable anchors wrap around the ship with a decent amount of force. Uh, does, those, sorry, go ahead. Does the harpoon cable actually block any torpedo slash weapons, uh, weapons arrays? No. Okay. Yeah. Or any other vital systems like engines or things like that? Hmm... Tell you what, let's roll one breach and see what happens. You're not actually <laughs> going to suffer the breach, I just want to see what system gets affected. Gotcha. Um, that's not the thing I should have rolled. Let's actually roll the right table, shall we? There we go. There's a small glitch into your um, lateral or your um, port side phaser array. But a quick, or whoever's taken over security believes that it's not a real problem. You have other things to do. Uh, those of you who are currently accessing the transporter room, 
Because if I recall right, you were just bypassing the armory and going straight there. Roger. Cool. Let and you... using the um, the specialists in the intelligence center to keep us advised so we can bypass any uh, roving patrols. Okay. Uh, so the specialist will deal with, will alert you because, well, that's her job at the moment. Uh, quick ducks into emergency um, maintenance corridors, Jeffrey's tubes and whatnot. You are able to escape the roving eyes of the uh, two patrols that you otherwise would have run into. And you will appear outside the transporter room. There's, of course, a few differences here. Like for example, these ones are gone. That's gone. And so is, is Miss Zell. No! <laughs> mm -hmm. What we received is not human. It's set, the sad thing is her transporter skills are better than Loxley's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Loxley did pretty good, didn't she? So you... And I'm just waiting for her to roll all, all failures now. Uh, not going to happen. <laughs> but... If she did all failures when we're transporting the Draven into the brig, would that failure in complication then send them outside the ship? Or know, in or literally the into the brig. <laughs> like body parts hanging into the brig. Yeah. Or it might just beam them all to the bridge. That would be amazing. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so into the warp core causing the explosion. Yeah. So you guys are in the hallway out there. Uh, there were two Draven guards out front. Oh, was I bringing Togi or Ronnie? I thought... You said Togi. Oh, my bad. I brought the wrong one. Yep. Is that who I was supposed to bring, Togi, or was I supposed to bring Ronnie? It does not matter. I, but... I think I said Ronnie. Okay. I think I mentioned leaving Togi in the Intelligence Center, but I may have... Okay, we'll I leave Togi there. Stuck, so. Okay. So we'll bring Ronnie back out. There's Ronnie. Okay. Oh, right, because someone took control of Ronnie to give them an experience point. I remember now. Oh, that's right. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay, so that's what you're seeing outside the transporter room. There is one Draven life sign inside the transporter room. And how do you wish to approach this? So the two on the outside, one on the inside... On the two on the outside, can we do, uh, on my count, you take left, I take right. On my count, we fire at the same time type deal. Okay. Um, sure. If you want to create that advantage, that would be two momentum. But I'll let you each get an attack before we I'm enter combat. That. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I would like to do that. Take care of two really, really quick. Okie dokie. Okay, momentum spent. All right. Uh, feel free to... Um, so each one of you can roll uh, control plus security. So which two? You all can. Yeah, all three of us? Yep. Well, actually, we'll take left. Um, Ronnie, take right, and then... Um, the other one, the bully, and take whoever's still standing. Okay. Control security. And I got focus of hand phaser. Hey! All right. So that's one momentum from all that. Oh, good lord! <laughs> the Shran man. Oh wait, no, I had science. Uh, Thrasher. Actually, yeah, security's even better than science. I don't I know mean, why. I mean, those would have been crits either way so yeah okay um you're back to six momentum i believe um one nope five momentum nope you had Dang. three you spent two for the momentum brought you down to one now you have th four momentum i'm sorry i'm doing math math is hard facts yeah okay um let's just start at the start so loxley does eight uh which one are you taking I was doing left. Okay, that one. Okay. Uh, even resistance from the armor is enough to cause them to be stunned. 
and I will let that happen in this case, so he will just go to sleep. Um, next up is uh, Vault Ranny. Could you roll challenge dice? Okay, and then how many challenge dice is it? Uh, that would be two challenge dice plus challenge dice for your security. And she has so a phaser far. one. Yeah. So is that five total? I believe that would be the case. What's your security score? Three? Three. Uh, I believe that's only four challenge dice. Four. Okay. Okay, and that's two. Uh, let me double check my phaser. Nope, it is two, so roll me one extra dice, please. Okay. That is still two points of damage. Okay. And Yaz was picking whoever was up. Yeah, that's still this guy, so... Uh, yep. Is it eight, then? Is it two for the each of the success crits and then four for the... Uh, nope, so it would be... No, so that just determines how well you hit and just adds extra momentum if you wish to add to... You can choose to add damage, add penetration, or stuff like that. So let's... So you can add, or you can spend a momentum to add penetration because, as you've seen, these guys do have armor. Or you could spend a momentum to add another challenge dice to the roll. Uh, let's do penetration. Okay. So that's pen two, I believe. So that's one momentum for penetration two. Is that six dice then? Uh, two nope. successes. Regular dice roll, and then we'll just... Yeah, so... Yeah, what is your thing? So you have a type 2 phaser because your security is still 3. Yep, 3. What's your security rating? 3? Should be uh, four. 4. Oh, 7 challenge dice then. Oh. Yep. Ooh, nice. That is definitely enough to make him slouch. Yep. Commander okay. Helsing has definitely trained his security team how to shoot. Like, holy so moly. Right. Good Just job, a... Helsing. Apologies about this, sir, but to please have a nice nap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gas is now polite British. I'm going with it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, we are now actually in combat. Okay, and before we go in, uh, Lux is going to call um, the specialist Renix. Renix. Yep. And Intel, we're in the transporter room is the third draven. Um, scanning. There's a small chirp. Uh, they appear to be by the transporter console. Roger. Um, uh, Zoner and Loxley go in towards, we'll cut to the uh, transporter station console. Uh, Randy, you cover it toward the transporter pad. And then if that's clear, come on up to the transporter console. Understood. Of course, sir. Okay. So, we have that here. <clears throat> I'll just... Oh. Nope. She should take a month off and I forget how roll 20 works. Add turn. He's not in this. Okay. So, who's moving first? Loxley will go in first. Okay. Loxley enters in uh, and behind the panel you see a familiar face. Oh, lovely. As she <clears throat> she looks up and goes, not now, I'm busy! And continues fondly, this transport attack is amazing! And she continues to talk to herself, talking her way through it. Oh, I shoot. I figured you would. Okay. Uh, do I have the chance to um, charge, or let's do aim. Okay. Um, I'll let that, um, tell you what, if you spend momentum, your minor action was going to be entering the room, but if you spend yeah, one momentum, I'll let you aim. Nah, I'll go ahead and I'll just um, shoot normal. Okay. And then use a momentum to for shoot. Okay. 
So we're still spending that one momentum just on something else. Okay. And I'm right. going to spend some threat to increase the complication range 17 to 20. Speaking of which... Oof. Well, that's still some. That's still several successes. <clears throat> so you, the hit does go off. Um, so roll damage. Uh, that is one momentum on top of all that, of course. And I'll use that momentum to re-roll the zeros. Okay. Okay, eight points of damage. Eight. Cool. So, as the... So, you do stun... So, she takes it, and as she slips unconscious, the complication kicks in, and she goes, That's how that works. And just as she slides off, she taps the in energize button, and this thing materializes. Skitters. So what you see in front of you is a, well, it's the first time you've seen a scorpy in the flesh, so to speak. Uh, an alive one, although this one appears to be rather mute. Well, enhanced is probably the best way to put it. Uh, its shell has been heavily, uh, has been covered in metal plates. Uh, its stinging tail has been replaced by a mechanized um, sort of a tail shooter, <clears throat> and it is wielding a rather large and unwieldy uh, sort of a polearm glaive in its arm. And if anyone were to actually watch Zilla, she would be sliding into unconsciousness with a smile on her face. <clears throat> As this thing roars. And. Okay, so Loxley's turn is done. And I'm going to spend some threat. Just. Be, I don't know if it is good to. I don't know if I'm allowed to just add a creature into combat halfway through, but I'll spend threat, so that makes everything okay. <laughs> and it is going to close into melee. And this is going to be an opposed melee attack, I believe. Where Skitters does a daring uh, plus security. And you do the same. I want to use one of the... Mo can I use a momentum? You can do so. Okay. Spend. Plus, plus security. <laughs> Very nice. That's probably not going to do a darn thing. We'll see how this works without threat. Well, that's still two successes, but that's nowhere near enough. It's it's still disoriented from the materialization. As... I made I made an error. She didn't have a focus, oh. but the the two would be a, a one, so it's still three to two. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fair. Bellows a soundless rage as it brings its giant spear just swinging around it. You duck out of its way as it scars across the door. Um, that's its turn. Uh, Do I get a counterattack? Um, ooh, good question. Really should have double checked that. I believe you can? Let's do that for the time being. I'll read up on the rules while you make your roll. Or is it, I instead of him rolling damage, I roll damage? Uh, let's see. Opposed task outcomes. That's what I forget about. Yeah. Melee's weird. Mm -hmm. What the? Oh, no, I don't want that button. Okay. Melee weapon can be made within reach. Yada, yada, yada. Control security, def uh, daring security. Uh, if the target wins the opposed task, then they are... Okay, so you're considered to have made a successful attack, so you can automatically roll damage. 
Roger, and damage is what plus security? Uh, for what sort of weapon are you using for melee? Uh, hand hand. Hand hand. Unarmed strike is just one. One challenge dice plus security, mm -hmm. unless you have talents. So five total. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I spend a momentum to get rid of the zero? Reroll the zeros. If you wish. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. I hope, it wor I hope it's worth it. Mm. Okay, so, so five total. That is that. Uh, what does knockdown do? Knockdown. One or more, if one or more effects are rolled, then the target is knocked prone. But this target, because of its size and stature, is immune to knockdown by melee. So, sorry, that would typically cause knockdown if it wasn't um, an arachnid. Oh, not a problem. Yep. Okay. So, that's... So that would be yes. Yes or Rani. Or actually both. So, yeah. you guys can go. Yep. I must insist that you please remove your, your claws off of the uh, lady's person. Okay. Are there any issues of firing into melee? Kind of thing? I don't believe there are. I was looking through, I didn't see anything saying there's a any penalty. No, I don't believe there is, just in the... So, standard applies. I mean, I okay. can always spend threat and increase complications, but not yet. Uh, can I aim and then and then I'll fire? Um, yes, I will let that happen. <clears throat> right. Oh yes! Ooh. It does hit, considering he's roughly the size of a centaur more like roughly the size of a horseman, it's not hard to miss. All right, Difficult seven challenges one. again? Uh, challenge dice would be uh, seven. Oh, nice. Ooh. And that was a momentum that we got on the, yep. the hit roll, right? Yep, that's right. So, okay, so uh, I'm assuming you're not re-aiming because of that, so that is fine. Ouch. Okay. So he takes, uh, after resistance, he takes that much damage. Uh, so you see that the phaser impacts his uh, chest. but And as it does, you can see several uh, subdermal organs, for lack of a better term, uh, flare to life and dissipate some of the energy. <clears throat> he does take wounds, but not as much as you dealt him. That is mildly inconvenient. Rather, isn't it? How? Yes. Why doesn't the big bad monster guy refuse to die? Um, Miss Rani. Okay, so... Um, the transporter systems are still working, right? They are still working. What do, you, what do we think? Uh, I think Rani is quite good at engineering. What do you think... Uh, what do you guys think about if uh, he goes away? Instead of trying to fight. I'm invested in the fight now, but I won't be heartbroken. <laughs> just just don't screw up and uh, tell both of them. Well, okay, so her security is not so good, but I could try a transporter. But security is having the lead here. Would you rather me just jump into the middle of the fight? Um, whatever your best move is. Oof. If you can be, if you can be me mount, kind of like... Perverse. Yeah, just go back where you came from. Okay, so uh, can Rani make it to the the transporter operations from where she is? Um, so I that will be your minor action to get over there. Mm hmm. And then it will be your actual action to do something with the console. Okay, so Rani is going to try to transport him mm -hmm. uh, to the brig. Okay. Uh, so because he's moved off of the transporter pad. Oh, that increases it. And the brig is not trans on on a transporter pad, but I will say it's in the ship, so I'll only apply the oh. non-transporter pad 
difficulty once. Uh, so Instead this of knocking him down, could I knock him back? Um, Try to knock him back onto the bat? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, maybe next round if this doesn't work. Um, so that'll be a difficulty of three test. Okay. Yep. Um, All right, so uh, daring plus engineering because you're doing this, you know, uh, in the spur of the moment. Uh, okay. Ship um, can, and the ship can assist with sensors plus engineering. Now, can I apply her determination beforehand mm -hmm. to give two automatic success, su successes? Her value is good to go. So just kind of <laughs> go for it. Cool. I like that. Do it. Okay. So going to roll this first because I'm in the middle of it. Um, sensor operations, probably not as a focus. No. Uh, if transporter skills tr or transporter systems, I would do something like targeted sensors might work better, but not just sensors blank. Okay. All right. So she doesn't have one. So rolling that. Oh, um, it's, oh. a, it's a really good thing that you use that determination dice. Yeah, so the, so yeah, yeah, using your determination that gives us three success. Mm -hmm. So it gives you three success, but one complication. So oh, can we use the momentum to get rid of the complication? You can if you want to. I Ooh, don't, I'd like. To I don't want skitters to end up in the bridge. Okay. <laughs> Spending the momentum, and then okay. that was of is course it I one or two shoot. momentum. Um, it is. I always forget. I believe it's two momentum to negate a complication. Yeah, it would be down to zero then. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Gone. So, Loxley, you're about to uh, uh, give him another wild haymaker when all of a sudden Skitters just vanishes and the large weapon that he was wielding uh, clatters to your clatters at your feet. Ronnie. The glaive is yours. <laughs> well I, done. I it's must... going on my wall. <laughs> the, we'll pull the two driven from the outside in. Is there a, a replicator in there by chance where we can replicate zip ties, super strength zip ties? I mean, if there isn't, there is one close enough. All right. Um, zip tie them up. And then we'll start getting the lock on everybody else. Captain, transporter room secured. Understood. Excellent work. And we get the uh, breathing masks as well. Good idea, just in case. <laughs> okay, uh, transporter room has been secured. Uh, shuttle folks. Are you guys doing anything? Yes, we'd like to dock. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I should say that now that the uh, slaver ship is aware of the presence, the slaver ship does something first. I have it here. <clears throat> I've never moved the combat macros over to this game. I'm going to have to do that. Okay. Unrelated, but there's also no techno babble macro, which I noticed. No, I'm going to have to. You know, I've taken a month off. You think I could have, you know, done some GM prep work in the middle of that? <laughs> We're all pretty slow here today, buddy. Yeah, that's I fair. Know you did song. Okay, so the ship makes one. And we'll roll for the crew. And I'm going to spend some threat to add an extra dice to the crew dice. Good thing I did. Ooh. Now, can we spend a momentum to raise your complication range? I don't think it works that way. But you <laughs> don't have any anyways, so no. And there does this. Nope, that's one zero too many. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And I'm going to spend some threat to increase penetration. That's what she said. That's what she said, yes, I'm aware of that. Okay. The ship... Um, 
Mm. Yeah. Uh, the USS Scryer suffers a massive impact from the uh, that shakes it to the core, uh, dealing seven points of damage with a penetration value of four. Um, so that is going to be, let's see, your, your scale five ship. I don't believe you have any armor on you. Uh, scale five, seven. Math is hard. Okay, so you take... Why is math hard? Penetration Wait a second. Four, that, Where that. are I yeah. scale two? I'm talking about the Scryer, the USS Nighthawk. Oh, if the oh. shuttle were to take this, it would be dead. I was going to say, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> oh, I thought they were shooting at us. Oh, no, you, nah. you've been blown clear, literally. Okay. We're invisible. <laughs> uh, actually, the breach to structure kind of negated that uh, system. Uh, yep. So the, the ship suffers a breach. Uh, that's the wrong breach. To this instead. Uh, to its weapon systems, knocking its um, phasers and photon torpedoes offline until proper damage control can take place. And this is an actual breach. Roger. Um, how many shields do we lose? Uh, you lose. Uh, you lose two shields. Uh, no, you don't. You lose. F you lose six. I'm sorry. I'm doing math the wrong way. You lose six. Uh, sh shields. Got it. Um, those of you watching from the bridge and from the shuttlecraft, the slaver ships underslung uh, massive weapon it appears to be that of a railgun, as it has picked up a <laughs> rock and thrown it at near light speeds towards the ship. <clears throat> Okay, now that uh, tension is being suitably raised, um, Captain, anything on your front? So, I got a little bit lost there. So, yep. the, sh the Nighthawk itself, we're losing six shields. Yep. And in terms of damage, what was assigned where? Uh, breach to weapons. Gotcha. Oh. So, we have a breach to weapons and a breach to structure mm -hmm. with six shields remaining. Complicated. <laughs> Rather. So we'd have to do a repair action on the weapons to be able to use them again, right? Correct. Which is what I was thinking, and I want to make sure, at least right now, my priority is disabling that railgun right now, because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if the entire ship's gone if we lose our shields again. But I'm also concerned about... I'm thinking out loud here. I'm also concerned about the, the awaiting the shuttlecraft. Um, Captain Commander Helsing. Go ahead, Helsing. <laughs> um, quick idea. If we did an emergency beam out of all the people on the shuttle back to the Nighthawk, and we set the Nighthawk on remote pilot and kamikaze it into this other ship... I think you mean put the shuttle onto autopilot. Ah, uh, yeah. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, you never know. That worked too. <laughs> I did think about that, Commander Helsing, but my only concern right now is making sure, unfortunately, I wanted to try to get all these things done at the same time, but apparently right now, with the sequence of events, we've run out of that luxury. So I'm inclined to agree. In any case, um, since we do have the transporter room secure, uh, let's order. Can this is out of character question? I mean, I could we could we could take a repair action while also trying to transport uh, the shuttle over, right? Uh, that is correct. Um, okay. However, as main engineering is currently not in your hands the difficulty will increase. Of course. Would I be able to rig up something on the shuttle to make it more explosive? Can... <laughs> second second question, actually, instead of actually blowing more things up, can I actually just use the shuttle sensors for targeting before we blow it up? I mean, if you don't 
if you want to take all the fun out of it, yeah. I do. <laughs> Jeez. That's what I was thinking. Let's, and before we actually destroy the shuttle, make sure, let's just use its sensors to target our uh, our weapons instead to try to disable uh, this railgun. Impossible. Very well. Okay. Um, so that is going to be a uh, sensors plus, let's see, you're determining flight heading, correct? This will be sensors plus con. Uh, this will be a difficulty of two. And the ship hull? Uh, ship can... Or the shuttle. Uh, yeah, shuttle, shuttle is sensors plus con, and the uh, crew role will be insight plus con. No, reason plus con. And Nothing from difficulty two. In any case, mm -hmm. actually, you know what? I'll I'll keep my my ideas in hold depending on the outcome of this role. Okay. Who's rolling? Yeah, who's rolling this? Yeah. <laughs> I believe the captain was rolling Jefferson. Rolling Jefferson, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, come this again? Was... What on here? <laughs> this was your idea, <laughs> Jefferson. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, give me some attributes. Give me some disciplines. I'm slow tonight. That's okay. Uh, you can this use all the momentum, too. Reason plus, <laughs> reason plus con. Reason plus con. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Oh. Difficulty? Uh, difficulty two. Two. You could spend threat to get more dice. No, thank you. Aw. Oh. I'm going to use my small craft focus. Well, oh, Helm Operations as a focus here. That would work. Well, there's your moment. So yes. that's three successes. God, Jefferson, it's hot tonight. Yeah. Well, you said it, not me. So if it, if he fails, it's on you. Okay. Hey, so... I'm playing Loxley, so he's yeah. hot. He is. Uh, so that is one degree or one momentum from you guys. Okay, so all you have to do is push a button and go. Meanwhile, um, the Shran is trying to figure out how to make this thing blow up even bigger. Uh, so this will be a control plus engineering. And this will be a difficulty of one. And if you have power systems or engineering systems. Yep, I got power okay. systems. That would do it. <laughs> Does the ship help or the shuttle help? Uh, not in this case because you're actively trying to sabotage the shuttle. But that is fine. That's the two successes you need. <laughs> the shuttle wants to help. It's it all. <laughs> um, so you have uh, figured out the how to properly um, uh, leak the adder, the antimatter from the what's left of the warp core to cause the biggest explosion possible. So the ship is ready, or the shuttle is ready to go. Boy, I sure hope we can eventually get replacements for all these uh, shuttles we're blowing. Uh, Replicators. This is, this is the good one. Well, I mean, you have two of them, so you have a spare. <laughs> like geez. That's true. We have more than one. It's, it's not the good one. This is just a, a shuttlecraft. <laughs> That's true. That is true. I'll, need, I'll find an excuse to blow up the Spectre next time. I'm sure Erkin will love that. Oh, okay. Uh, shuttle report right, ready, Captain. Let's beam us out. <laughs> All right then. Well, does the shuttle case. have transporter pad? Uh, the shuttle has one uh, transporter uh, pad. Okay. So you can either beam out one at a time or do some techno babbly stuff with the transporter pad on the shuttle or something. I'd love to do some techno babbly stuff because in that case we're gonna accelerate the plans and which exact how exactly we were dealing with the transporting on the sh on the ship. Man, that was a jumble of words. I hope I made sense there. My Close point enough. being, that was, that that wasn't techno babble. That was just babble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Thashran and Jefferson, feel free to roll. At this stage, it's pro yeah. This will be daring plus engineering. 
to try to jury rig a wide beam uh, transporter pad on your side. This is going to be a difficulty of two, and because for this, t because he's flight officer today, uh, Jefferson, you can substitute Con for your engineering. Do you Are we both making main roles, or is one person uh, assisting? One of you can lead, and the other has to assist. You guys figure it out. Okay, well, probably fair to lead. lead. Yeah, exactly. I'll assist. Cool. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, can I make a uh, control uh, con check here? Yep, control. Uh, daring con, please. Daring con, rather. Yep. No focuses, I suppose, yeah. Uh, I mean, I I think I'd let you get away with small craft just because you know this ship. That's stretching it just this once. Appreciate it. Okay, that is two degrees success at a complication. Um, I could, you could let me, uh, that could succeed at cost, so I'll get a threat from that. I mean, we still do have the momentum. You have one momentum, it, but you... Yeah, it costs two. It costs oh, two. that's right, yeah. that's right, that's right. Yeah. I like to keep my antenna where they're at, so yeah, I would say use the threat. Okay. Determination at all? Uh, deter well, uh, Theshran, you could spend determination to re-roll that complication. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me see what... Yeah, so if you have a value, that would work. Value of... I hate complications. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, how about better be fast than perfect? Let me do this quickly. Okay, that works quite well in this instance. So roll me one, re roll the daring plus engineering. So what, re roll, ah, roll one dice from that. Still zero, yep, but at least that will succeed at cost. Okay. Um, shuttle reports ready, Captain. Captain? Captain is here. No worries. So, Miss Abrell, the away team is ready to beam on over. Are you prepared to beam into engineering? Uh, we're ready here. Does everybody on the shuttle, shuttle have uh, breathing masks? I we do. Because we, we had them from going into the ship. Mm -hmm. you oh, did that's too? right. So we'll flood with Nessacene and then beam right in. I exactly. That's the sequence of events. So, ladies, uh, people, the people on the shuttle, are going to prepare their breathing masks and prepare their phaser rifles or and or hand phasers, and they're going to join you immediately while beaming into engineering to go rescue the rest of the crew that are there. So you have an additional force backing you up immediately. They're going to beam directly into engineering. Roger, do we would we have to leave Ronnie at the um, console? Uh, yes, someone does have to man the console. Yeah. So. But you could put security lockdown per protocols in place or something along those lines. You know, we'll just... do something along those lines as well. Okay. Okay, uh, Ronnie, if you could please roll me uh, two control plus engineering tasks and uh, the ship can assist with each with computers plus sensors or no sensors plus engineering sorry um, each task is going to be difficulty uh, actually the first task will be difficulty three okay um, I'd like to spend one momentum then to get a third dice okay And Does then... the ship roll twice? Uh, yep, ship will roll twice too. Okay, so okay, so these two materialize successfully into engineering. And now, if you could have a second roll, and this is for the ones on the shuttle. This is going to be difficulty four. And the Nighthawk, Nighthawk got, zero. got a zero this time. 
Uh, there is nothing I can do about increasing this. Oh, um, threat? Threat will work. Okay, so it's two threat for a third dice, or is it one threat? Uh, one threat for a third, an additional, and then two threat for a fourth, I believe. Okay, what do you guys think? Should I amp it up to make certain that this goes through? So it'd be three additional, oh, yeah, two threats, we got one momentum. I'm good with it, Captain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, All so right, four. Everybody. All right, here we go. And... Nice. Hey. Whew. So that is five successes. So you get one momentum out of that. Okay, just let me get some tokens ready here. Copy that. We're going into engineering now. Okay, while I'm doing that, um, Captain, if you could please roll me um, the medical check. So, this is going to be a... What is... Let's roll a... Hmm. Let's roll control plus medicine. And ship can assist with computers plus medicine. Actually, ship will assist with structure plus medicine. And this difficulty is going to be difficulty of two to flood the place with gas. Oh, okay. That's a complication. Makes sense since we had yeah. a breach to the structure. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a focus for this. So ship tactics, maybe? Well, actually, an assisting gas. Where's that stretching it? That's a, stretching it a bit, but I'll let that happen for the moment. So I'm just trying to figure things out. All right. Well, that is the three you need. And that's one momentum from you. Cool. Okay. I'm just still getting tokens ready. It's lining it up. So we have... Like a, Two momentum, do we want to get rid of that complication? Certainly. We've okay. given him a... Okay. Okay, and then we have a few of these Okay, guys. spent the two momentum for that complication then. Okay. Okay, so those are all those folks getting all the characters from the shuttle into engineering. You brought along a lot of people. Holy moly. Um, I'm. Is Jefferson coming too, or is Jefferson staying on the starship? <laughs> no, he's coming too. Okay. He's, yeah, he's coming. done good. Uh, we need to bring him out of the... <laughs> well, I mean, you know... Maybe if beforehand, like the last couple of ventures, we would have loved it, but now... Yeah, no, he's <laughs> actually good. Like, seriously. Yeah, he's right. redeemed himself. But yeah. he can go out with a bang, and he'll be remembered for his... Literally. Ability. You know, that's true. This will now be known as the Jefferson Maneuver. <laughs> okay. Nope. Okay, so someone please roll me... Let's see, you're rolling, you're ramming speed and then exploding. Someone roll me 15 challenge dice, please. I got it. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. That's 11 points of damage. Cool. Okay, so anything less than 10, and it would have just been a damaged system. But with that amount, but over that, their railgun is completely destroyed. Nice. As in, good luck finding it again. Okay, so this is going to be a very cluttered map, but it's not meant for this many people. Okay. <laughs> there is... Today is a good day for surprise. Yes. Do we want to reroll these uh, zeros here? Don't have any momentum. That's right. Yeah. Okay. The scene shifts to engineering, where another one of these... Um, <laughs> women, the one that identified herself as Zilla, is going through the uh, warp system literally hammer and tongs. There, she has five guards. 
Um, Rani is here. Yeah, so Rani's over here with the rest of them. Kassat, Zell, and a couple other engineering NPCs are being held at gunpoint by those two. And these ones are just standing around looking menacingly when all of a sudden, holy crap, Starfleet. As soon as Patron sees what's happening, he starts yelling at the lady to just stop, stop uh, touching his baby. She... Oh, so the gas didn't have any effect? Oh, yes. I should say that. As soon as you materialize in, she looks at you, uh, holds up a disco ball, says, Which one of you knows what this thing is? Falls asleep on the console, drops the disco ball to a shatter. Oh no! Oh, no! And, and Helsing yells no as well. <laughs> this is the biggest loss we've suffered ever. Right. And with that, um, because of good as nest the scene, and because you've planned this very well, um, all the guards uh, fall asleep as well. It's good stuff. I assume the other engineers also fall asleep if they were. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Only, the uh, just because he's a Vulcan, he's able to withstand it a little longer. Uh, Kassat takes two steps forward, and says, "Commander, it is agreeable to see you," and then promptly, dead man falls off the stairs. Falls off the stairs? Well, sort of falls down the stairs and tumbles. <laughs> uh, I'll rush over and do a quick check and make sure he's okay. I mean, he's unconscious and snoring. He might have a mild concussion when he wakes up, but... Okay, then I run over to the disco ball. Uh, the disco ball is a lost cause, I'm afraid. <laughs> no! <laughs> Security immediately goes to the Draven and starts removing weapons and ushering him into a pile where we can secure him. Okay. Uh, do me a favor, please, and roll me uh, insight security difficulty of three on... Uh, the female Draven. Insight security. Mm -hmm. Is Kassat okay? Uh, he, yeah, he's perfectly fine. Vulcans are tough. Okay. He fell for comedic effect. Okay. He did. He, he did fall at your feet, so you might. <laughs> Whoa, you cut off terribly there. Can I use my determination with the value of the greater good bounces on a knife edge? Mm, I'll, let that, I'll let that happen. You said difficulty four, right? Difficulty three. Oh, three? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go ahead and burn it. Okay. And I don't have... Yeah, I don't have... Okay. No focus. That's... Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, that's five successes. So, two momentum. And I'm going to use my veteran to see if I can get my determination back. Cool. Okay. And I do. You do. Yeah, congratulations. It's the first time I've actually seen veteran work. Nice. Um... So what you find along her wrist is a, at first it appears to be a simple armband that sort of snakes up one of her uh, arms. However, it turns out to be a collapsible en uh, energy whip of some kind that um, upon immediately discovering this, you find how it connects to her bioenergy output port and you disable that and claim the bio whip. Mm -hmm. Keep that for later. I'll call the captain and basically say that we have engineer. Well, if that's the case, well done. If Are there any casualties? Yes, the most important one. We've lost the disco ball, huh. captain. Wow, well, truly I am heartbroken. But, Don't worry, I'll, I'll, I will arrange for uh, a proper funeral service after. Just so you guys know, the, the ship isn't completely fully secured yet, but I'm glad to right. hear that we have main engineering. But 
you know, there's not a lot of time for uh, the idle pleasantries. Round these people up, get them to the brig, and let's secure the rest of the ship. <laughs> okay, so... Let's get started on repairs to the weapon system so I can, uh... <clears throat> wonder, uh... What's the word? Threaten? Threaten? Yeah. Yeah, threaten the Draven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to drop all pretense here yeah, right now. <laughs> Just, yeah. Okay. Diplomacy is out the window. Basically. Okay, so we're going to go to the brig real quick. Can can the doctor bring the engineering crew back around? Oh, yeah. yeah. Engineering crew is more is fairly functional. They're just shaken up and being hostage. So not much needing to be done there. So, that's there, that's there. Where is Skitters? Um, On the hull? Yeah. That's pretty crowded. I mean, yeah, it's it's a scale 5, so it should it has a decent sized brig, but we're still cramming about 20 people in here. So, it's yeah. And also Skitters, so that doesn't help much. The smell must be amazing. It is pretty interesting. So, once... Nope, we're looking at tokens. So, uh, Commander Bashir and Commander Helsing, um, br as you bring these bodies to the brig, the captain uh, stands upright and s says, I believe the time has come for me to ask for parlay. I think it's a tad late for parlay. I don't speak French. The captain might. Then please let me speak to your captain. I'll calm him. It's like, Captain, they apparently would like to parlay with you. Oh. Well, this is an interesting sequence of events. Put him on audio. I'm not gonna come down there to go see them. <laughs> um, uh, I'll tap. I'll tap the control pad on the thing to make it so they can talk to each other from the bridge. Okay. You're on speakerphone now. <laughs> right. Um, Cap Captain, my name is Balthier Void Runner of the Void Runner Clan and commanding officer of the Void Nightmare. I wish to discuss terms of our surrender. I'm listening. Please understand, Captain, that we are... We lost our homes, and then we're driven out of other homes, and then, admittedly, resorted to slavery, which is legal in some systems. However, we have bitten off more than we could chew. We All we wish is to return to our ship and depart. Obviously, Starfleet is is the new power in this sector of space, and we do not wish to challenge it any further. Order your ship to surrender, and I'll think about agreeing to your terms. Of course. Can you please patch me through to my ship? Certainly. Frequency is open. Um, Void Nightmare, this is the, this is Cap, this is a uh, Belthier. What's the ship status? Sir, they destroyed the railgun. You hear more alert klaxons in the background. Uh, uh, Belthier just sighs. Send damage repair teams to deal with any damage. Treat who you can. We're not going to get anyone from this. This is a failure. Please stand down weapons and prepare to receive us if there are... If this ship is so kind enough as to release us. Then I'm immediately going to cut off that communications. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell him, Balthier, let me tell you exactly what's going to happen right now. You attacked us in this nebula. Sneak, quite sneakily, might I add, through an act of subterfuge. Right now, I'm not necessarily in the most gracious of moods. 
But if you know anything about the Federation, you would know that if you ever had a legitimate grievance with us, that we would most definitely listen to you. I understand that you may be hurt. I understand that you may blame me and my people for actions that we probably may or may not have intended. And I apologize for that. But I do not condone an attack on my ship, my crew, or myself. This is what will happen. Your ship will stand down. You will assist myself and my officers going over to your ship and stripping it of any possible offensive weaponry that it may have. We will then leave the nebula and then we will immediately go to a place that I'm certain that you're familiar with, which is Deep Space 15. After which, we will then discuss the terms. He... You... I apologize, I think I cut out. Yeah, that. you did. Sorry, you... <laughs> After which, we will then discuss the terms that I'm sure you will find most agreeable. Uh, Helsing and um, Bashir, you see whatever poise the captain still had just evaporate as he just sort of slumps down on one of the benches. I have no choice. I, I, I tell him, uh -huh. as it goes on, if you play this right, you're going to come out better than you came in. He looks up at Mr. Helsing. I find that very difficult to believe. I accept your terms, Captain. Well, in that case, as soon as he says he accepts my terms, I cut off comms. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I'm just going to completely continue to be curt for the foreseeable future. That's... And make sure that. Mm hmm. You made it personal. And I'll, I'll, I'll keep my composure, but... Uh -uh. Oh, yes. Absolutely. I would expect nothing less. Okay. Lieutenant Commander Helsing, uh, prepare a security team to take them back to their ship and to do as the captain said. Aye, uh, sir. <laughs> All right. So... Uh, stripping of the uh, the Void Nightmare takes about a day, um, during which time you find that there's actually three of these uh, female individuals. Um, if asked, she just says that she's a biochemical genius and figured that genius should be... that she was the only one that could talk. She was... Ah. She needed someone intelligent to talk to, so she just created herself. They're clones? Seemingly, yes. Are the rest of them clones as well? Nope. Most of them appear to be, you know, humble, um, as different as one is, as different as one can be from another one. Um, the uh, ship, being despite being a scale four, is actually quite full of uh, Draven. Um, there is the, you know, there's the soldier cast that you've met rather forcefully. There is also the. There's also several families on one of on one of the middle decks. Um, in uh, talking to them, it appears that they are a sort of a traveling clan. They don't really, no. yeah, they don't really share their history as such. But it doesn't seem like they have a home at the moment. Um, the lower decks, on the other hand, is pretty much the stuff of biological nightmares. Um, there is literally a bioprocessing plant where they toss in dead um, carcasses to convert to raw matter. If prompted, uh, Zilla just said that she had some very good she had some very good cloning facilities once, thanks to the Vitars, but they're gone now, and she sort of cries a little bit before cackling for some unknown reason. Oh wow. That's creepy as heck. Oh, yes. <laughs> so oh. how... Do we want to set these up? I'm going to go up to the captain during during this bit and tell him that they mentioned something about the Vatars running them out as a clan. And it appears that their entire clan of the Void Runners is on the ship. There could be some more information on the Vatars they could be potentially turned to work for us against the Batars. 
Truth be told, I picked up on that too, but we still don't necessarily understand the direction of power that remains within the Expanse and this region of space, regardless of which. And I'm more concerned of an, an enemy that we've in, inadvertently made than the Vatars themselves. Yeah, has, these guys has, creep me out. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm getting weird vibes off them since immediate, immediately since we came into contact with them. But I need to remind you that our current, my current concern right now is no longer the Vatars. It's about strengthening Starfleet. And unfortunately, we have another war going on right now. And I don't I'm really sure want to fight. I am not interested in fighting two fronts. Understand, but we don't have to run the the op ourselves. Cerebus is permanently stationed there. If it turns out they'd be an asset, they could be an asset that Cerebus runs. I most definitely pass this information along to Captain Crawford or whoever is in command right now. Uh, regardless of which, I'll also make a note and immediately contact Director Chalmers and potentially Admiral Riker. There's a lot of information that we gathered here in a very short amount of time. And I want to make sure that we get on top of it. I'm no longer interested in being kept in the dark or left in the dust. Very well. And that sort of ends my plot. Um, does anybody have anything they wish to do before I call the session to a close? Um, Loxley's going to go to uh, sickbay to try to get fixed up and uh, yeah, it's well as well. I know they were banged up really bad. Okay. So let's do a quick thing in sickbay. Uh, where the doctor um, is the first back in sickbay and is horrified to see that someone has gone through all of his stuff. Oh. I all... just put it the way I wanted it. Yeah, um... All the drawers are open, I would assume, and everything is yeah. just somewhere different. All the drawers are open. Your computer system has been rifled through. Um, it appears whatever, whoever was in here was looking for biological information. Did they get the uh, the secret stash under the desk? Depends. Was the secret stash bioweapons or alcohol? Alcohol, <laughs> which then, is yeah. a bioweapon sometimes. Then yes, they they took the alcohol too. So in He's walks. actually visibly upset by this. Like he is normal, cheerful demeanor switches to a, a one of grimace. What's it with <laughs> medical officers and hiding alcohol in their sick bay? Uh, right. Sometimes it's necessary. Um, There's several crew members. How many casualties? Uh, that's what I was going to ask. How many casualties? Uh, let's roll oh. here. And we did have quite the invasion, didn't we? We did. Only uh, two individuals were killed during the assault. <sighs> Several were injured. Many will take a few weeks to uh, fully recover. It appears that some of their weaponry deploy deploys a w weapon similar to that of an agonizer from the Mirror Universe, which caused cells just to vibrate with such agony. Oh, and it will take a yeah, something along those lines. Um, you're quite quiet there, Bashir. Or I'm Sorry. quite loud. Not sure which. Either way. <laughs> um, so, at this stage, they come in with minor enough injuries. They, The security officers are healed fairly quickly. Okay. All right. You know, do a quick once-over on uh, whichever one's the most injured. And just kind of like, it's it's not quite a procession, but come on in. Let's get you patched up. Um, so nothing serious? Nothing overly serious, other than the two that died. There's There were a few that suffered broken bones. Um, some put up a resistance as they were being dragged into the cargo bay. But, Oof. and were, you know, suitably punished. But for the most part, nothing, aside from the two that fought back too hard and had to be made examples of, is what it is. That's unfortunate. Very. Um, so okay. Well, do we do do we need to do a check for these two or? No, not at this stage. Plot's pretty much done. So, if you guys want to talk or have a quick role play scene, that's cool. Okay. They're, they're minor characters, so yeah, pretty much. 
Uh, anyone wish to do anything else? All right. Well, on that note, thank you so much for your first session back. I hope we have a fun season ahead of us. Thank you very much for playing, and of course, thank you for listening. Uh, we will be we will be back on Thursday the 24th at 6 p.m. Pacific. So on behalf of myself and my players, good thanks for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>